Eisenmenger's syndrome. Etiology, pathophysiology, and pathology. A large left to right shunt causes increased pulmonary blood flow. Over time this can result in vascular obstructive disease leading to pulmonary hypertension and right ventricular hypertrophy. As the pulmonary arterial pressures approach and exceed systemic pressures, the original left to right shunt becomes bidirectional and then reverses, right to left. This shunt reversal results in cyanosis. These changes and their associated complications are known as Eisenmenger syndrome and can complicate both simple, e.g. atrial septal defect and ventricular septal defect, as well as more complex congenital cardiac abnormalities. Shunt reversal often takes many years and typically occurs in the third decade, Fig 73. Clinical Presentation Cyanosis Limiting exertional dyspnoea. Palpitations secondary to atrial arrhythmias, atrial fibrillation and flutter, and ventricular arrhythmias, ventricular tachycardia. Hemoptysis. Syncope and sudden death. Congestive heart failure. Physical signs. Cyanosis. Clubbing. Signs of pulmonary hypertension, right ventricular heave, right ventricular outflow tract thrill, loud P2, pulmonary ejection flow murmur and high-pitched early diastolic murmur of pulmonary regurgitation, gram steel murmur. Signs of tricuspid regurgitation, elevated JVP and pansystolic murmur. NB. In Eisenmenger's syndrome, the murmur of the original shunt will have disappeared. Investigations ECG Peaked P waves, right atrial enlargement, right ventricular hypertrophy and atrial arrhythmias. Chest radiograph Prominent central pulmonary arteries and pruning of peripheral pulmonary vessels. Echocardiography can be used to identify the anatomic site and direction of the shunt. The shunt can also be quantified. Cardiac catheterization. Pulmonary pressure and saturation can be measured directly. It also allows assessment of pulmonary vascular reactivity, which may determine the success of future surgical procedure. Treatment. The main management principle in this group of patients is to avoid any factors that may destabilize the circulation and to treat any complications. In those with reactive pulmonary vessels, surgical correction of the underlying shunt may be of value. In the remaining patients, a combination of oxygen therapy, prostacyclin, and slash or calcium channel blockers may provide variable levels of disease stability and marginal symptom improvement. Lung and slash or heart transplantation may be required. Prognosis After diagnosis, the 10-year survival is 80% and the 25-year survival 40%. A poor prognosis is associated with the following. Syncope. Signs of right ventricular failure. Low cardiac output. Severe hyposemia. Prevention. Early closure of hemodynamically significant left to right shunts and or protective pulmonary artery banding will reduce pulmonary flow and avoid development of pulmonary vascular disease.